All right, guys, I'm going to take a deep breath because uh, this is your Wild Whitehall eligible water video for the Kayak Adventure Series. And the reason I say I'm going to take a deep breath, kind of jokingly, is it's not that there's more, you know, water, acres of water in bounds or miles of, of water in bounds per se at this event. It's just there's a lot of lakes that com compose of all that water and rivers. So let's get into it. Um, your host city is Whitehall, Michigan. Hence, Wild Whitehall. And uh, we'll get into all these venues and, and all the festivities in another video. But this is just all about your eligible water. And essentially, guys, all we're doing in this tournament, it's really not hard to understand. Rivers and creeks that are flowing from the east to the west into Lake Michigan, all the rivers and creeks, right? They all form these little lakes. Uh, some little, some big, some medium, whatever. They're just different lakes, bays right before you get into Lake Michigan proper. Incredible fishing. So we're going to let you guys fish those lakes and the free-flowing rivers up to certain points. Uh, and that's your eligible water. So let's get into it. The first one is going to be the Grand River. And uh, I'm actually going to start at the, the boundary here at the mouth of Lake Michigan. So you guys can see the Grand River. And we do not want you guys going past the shipping canals, okay, the barge and shipping canals here to get out into Main Lake. Uh, proper Lake Michigan. So that is why you will see a red line at every one of those. And we don't want you going past the very tip here. So past the point. So you can make casts further. Of course, you can sit right here uh, at the end and make casts out, but you just cannot get your kayak any further than right here. This imaginary line between the two. And of course, you can fish any of this water that's all free flowing and if it's all connected, you can fish it, access it wherever you want to access it publicly. Uh, we do kind of note Spring Lake here just because it's a, a named lake and a good sized lake. But essentially, it's all the Grand River. And we will do the rivers a little bit later. So let's just go and do all the lakes that go up this lake shore. The next lake up is going to be Mona Lake. And it's kind of a medium-sized lake here. And again, you got your boundary into Lake Michigan. I'm going to go fast because they're all kind of similar. So the next one up is going to be Muskegon Lake. And it's right near the town of Muskegon here. As you zoom in, same thing. We don't want you going past this protected area here. And uh, stay in this area here. And then out in the main lake, we'll keep you guys right there. And that's your hard boundary for the Muskegon River and uh, Muskegon Lake. Uh, we have some smaller lakes, you know, horsepower restriction or electric only lakes. They're kind of, you know, they're kayak friendly. So why would we not include these? They're public fisheries. So let's include them in these air in the kayak adventure series tournaments. And it's kind of sneaky. Some of these might be hidden gems. So that is your boundary. You can't go into Lake Michigan right there. That is Duck Lake. There's a state park right there. So be interesting to see what comes from some of these smaller bodies of water. This is our host city again. We're up to Whitehall. This is White Lake. And of course, same thing. Cannot go past the canal right there. Next lake up, you guys are going to get to explore and fish is going to be Stony Lake. There's some docks on this lake. It's a, it's a small lake, not super big. But it'll be interesting to see people move from some of these small ones. Like they bounce from a small one or from a small one to a big one or to a river, to a small lake, and just kind of split their time. And, and how maybe the Friday session is utilized at this event, that's going to be key. Because those four hours on Friday, you know, could be key. I will note Silver Lake's not in bounds. Um, none of these in Upper Silver Lake are in bounds. You know, this is kind of silted in with all the sand from the sand dunes. So we, we just... It's really not that that great. We didn't want to include it. Obviously, we could have included it and let the anglers figure that out, but we don't want you to, to waste your time there. But we do want you to go visit Silver Lake. It's really cool. Uh, I actually went there with my son, Theo, when we visited this this town and did a, a demo with Water Dog Outfitters there. This is a must. Okay, if you're bringing your family, kids, family, guys, you've got to go to Silver Lake State Park and check out. There, You can drive ATVs and off-road vehicles um, there as well, so... Go check it out. These sand dunes are so big, it's hard to even tell how giant they are. It blew me away. Just a unique feature on Lake Michigan here. And then I'm excited for you guys to go see for, you know, off the water stuff. Now, Pentwater Lake is the next lake north. And again, all the creeks that feed into it, you can fish it all, guys. And your boundary is going to be right here at the very end. 
of the canal. Next one. Moving along. This one reminds me of Duck Lake, about the same size. Bass Lake. So, obviously, it's probably bass in there. It's called Bass Lake, so you guys can figure out if they're winning bass or not. But there's got to be some bass in there. Otherwise, that's totally false advertising. Uh, again, rivers and creeks coming in here. Pier Marquette Lake and Pier Marquette Boundary right there. Again, this map is interactive on the tournament page. You guys can explore a lot more. I'm just walking you guys through it real quick, get you excited about it. This is Lincoln Lake, kind of a longer lake here, and got a, a nice size tributary flowing into it, and your boundary right there at the end of the rock channel. And our final lake to the north is Hamlin. So there's your boundary into Lake Michigan. It's the Big Sable River that feeds it. This is a Ludington State Park. And Hamlin Lake is a decent-sized lake uh, to the north here. So that'll be fun to see what guys can pull out of that lake and explore as well. And now let's move on to the rivers. Downstream here, uh, or down south, I should say, Lincoln River. Again, we're not. I'm not showing every river and creek, guys. Um, but the one that are, they're a little bit bigger and more substantial, substantial, I should say, and floatable in a kayak. Those are the ones I'm mentioning here. So Lincoln River looks to be a pretty decent sized little creek river. The Pier Marquette River is the next one. Again, all of these are feeding the lakes that we already have already talked about. So I didn't have to even list them because we've got some core bodies of water that are already connected to them, free flowing. But again, Pier Marquette, you can see nice wood you know down in the river decent size gotta have some good good size fish i'm sure and then you go further south you'll get to the white white river here this is definitely like kayak adventure series type stuff you know as you can see there's all kinds of back channels and cuts and tributaries and oxbows and just just wild place and, of course, that's what this series is all about, you know, being able to fish all of it, whether it's wild or not, just all this kind of stuff. So if you go all the way upstream on the white, we do have a, uh, a northern upstream launch boundary, I should say, right here at uh, Vita Weaver Park. That's your upstream launch boundary on the white, and this is your hard boundary on the white, so you cannot portage up that kind of spillway dam there. Other spillway dams that are in between everything usually we can but again we want to keep people within an hour so we did block that spillway dam off just to keep people within that hour moving down to the Muskegon River again a, another solid tributary a decent size for sure and that one's gonna be fun so you can go all the way up and fish it through the town of Nuevo can't wait for you guys to explore and see what you can find the Croton Dam DNR boat launch is, uh, you know, right there. It's a northern launch boundary. It's essentially a hard boundary because you cannot go above this dam. We didn't have to put a hard boundary line there just because it's it's not a spillway dam, even though water is definitely flowing over in this uh, video. But it's not that type of dam. It's still flowing under, I should say, but just through some floodgates. So that is going to be the boundary. You cannot go, obviously, above there. To the south here, our final one, the Grand River. Uh, flows all the way through Grand Rapids. And you'll notice there's, there's some spillway dams all through the town here. Okay, Again, those are fine. You can go above or below those, whatever you choose. You can portage them. And your upstream boundary is going to be right here by, it uh, looks like Highway 44. And it's called the uh, DNR Park right here. So and anything that is downstream, any other rivers, uh, creeks free-flowing into the Grand River are all in bounds. And eligible and if you see a, a spill which I should mention this one if you see a spillway dam like this one this is okay to go and fish above all the way this is just a uh, a spillway type dam it's free flowing kind of running the river if you will yeah it backs the water up a little bit but essentially that's just running the river if you see any dams like that on the kayak adventure series and they're off of a you know they're in in the uh, boundary of you know the northern or upstream boat uh, launch boundary and the downstream launch boundary they're all fine you can portage and go above those dams launch above those dams fish above those dams we would ma make a hard boundary there if we didn't want you to okay guys the only difference again is if it's an actual 
dam where the water flows underneath. If you want to go and watch the very first Kayak Adventure Series uh, eligible water video I did for Georgia, I explain it in a little bit more in depth and show it. But essentially the rules, you, if you read the rules, you probably understand too. Any of the dams where the water goes under, through the pipes, and it's flowing under, therefore it's not really connecting the ecosystems. You know, spillway dams and, and lowhead dams, those are just running the river. They're very, very often, or much of the year, when the water's up, they're actually covered up. So you won't even know they're there. The water gets high enough so the ecosystems are connected. So those are always good to go as long as they're inside, you know, coming off of our core bodies of water and inside the uh, upstream, you know, launch boundary and downstream launch boundary. So hopefully that clears that up. And I cannot wait for you guys to have a lot of fun at Wild White Hall because trust me, guys, this is, I've talked to locals, this is going to be so much fun to see what is going to win this tournament large mouth small mouth or mixed bag because they all say it could be won either way and it's a coin flip so i cannot wait to see how it's won river creek lake big lake or these small lakes it's it's just going to be exciting we have so many storylines to follow for this one and uh, we've got some incredible venues this is going to be one of the most exciting places to come to and of course all the sites and attractions for the family ton of fun. You do not want to miss Wild Whitehall.